Welcome to The Idea Space, a podcast devoted to sharing strategies and tools to help you make your dream life possible. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women grow their businesses and get what they want without feeling guilty, overwhelmed, or confused. If you're tired of your ideas spinning around your mind and you really want something more for yourself, you're in the right place. Learn how to create the space to make your ideas a reality. I promise if I can do this, anyone can. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. I wanted to ask you if you've ever struggled with the idea of self-trust, which can speak to our confidence. And if we don't have self-trust and confidence, we often hold ourselves back. I was really looking for some experts to speak to you all about this topic. And I reached out in a very large Facebook group I'm a part of. And the first person who responded was Daria. And I'm going to say your last name wrong. I know it. So I'm not even going to attempt it. Go for it. (laughs) When I went to explore her website and found out more about her, I realized what an expert she is at helping people become thought leaders. Daria is a speaker and a thought leader herself. She's also an author, but she's really a strategic expert in helping people develop their thought leadership and bring it to the world. So I'm going to actually turn the conversation over. And Daria, can you introduce yourself and tell us your story in the world and how we got connected? So first of all, thanks for having me. I'm very excited to share this uh, this time with you and the, the listeners and the, the viewers. Um, so yeah, right now I'm in Southern France. I am, uh, since 10 years now, I've been uh, working with uh, my partner. Um, we co-founded a company nine years ago. So I've been basically training people to live their best, biggest, boldest self and really live from their passion, their talent. For for me, that's so important that we are aligned, that we are really stepping up in our power and sharing the full gift that we have with the world. And of course, self-trust and confidence is a big part of what, what we need to do. And whatever, even if I'm a strategist myself, I truly believe that if you don't have the mindset right, no matter how much we learn, it doesn't going to help you to you know reach your goals in business, in sales, in stage. There's so many things that we know how to do, but we don't know how to trick our mind to do it. So I'm I'm really excited about this conversation. Me too. I I'm, so the group that Daria and I are in together is the Amy Porterfield Insiders Group, which is which has a lot of people in it. But the only way you can get in that group is if you've purchased one of Amy's products and. Those the people in this group are incredibly well. Uh, they're successful. They're 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 well versed in entrepreneurship. And I see week after week after week people saying, "I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. I need another course. I need another certification. I can't put my content out there. I can't put my thoughts out there." And you and I both know it's not that you don't know what you're doing. It's no. not that you need another course. So I'm hoping that you can talk to us today about what you do need to get your thought leadership, your ideas, your brilliance out into the world. Yeah. I mean, let's just talk for, in, in general, whoever is listening today, you all have a dream, a goal, that you, a milestone, that, or maybe a vision board. And there's something on that vision board that you'd be like, I want to do that. I want to do a TEDx. I want to write that book. And then somehow we get stuck. And I think there are several things to it. One of the first most important things is the clarity. Mm -hmm. If you're lacking clarity of your dreams, and I don't talk about the plan of like writing down the checklist, I'm thinking the bigger vision of where am I going and what can I imagine imagine for myself and not limiting yourself to say, well, I just want this. No, what's the big, bold dream that you have? If you start to have the clarity and if you start to see how you can contribute in this world and you can switch that um, perspective of it's not about me. Usually if when we learn to switch that into contribution and service and when we start to see our dream as a way to, you know, fuel our talent and be out there and serve. Serving others is one of the most grateful thing we can do. If, I mean, if you're feeling clarity and a, a fog or overwhelm, or somehow if you feel like not doing something, you can always come back to the bigger mission of why am I doing this? And when you find back to that service, somehow you can overcome most things. I would say that going alive on, you know, going on stage or going, uh, writing that book or many things that I've done myself that were first time, you know, very scary. I did it 
for the others. And I said, well, it doesn't really matter how, you know, crappy I am at this or that because I'm just a new, you know, I'm, I'm starting something new. I'm learning. It doesn't matter because maybe there's someone in that audience that need to hear that me- this message or maybe someone listening to this podcast need to hear. And if that one person, if I can help them to see the world as a brighter place today, then it's worth it all. So I think that is the first thing that we can do to start seeing that it's never about us really when we go on stage or we we share a podcast. If we turn it around and see that we are the witness of, you know, this show and the audience is actually the the real people on the stage and we start to listen to them, uh, most time we forget ourselves, our ego kind of disappears because we are so focused on service. Yes, service. Who can I help today? How can this help somebody else? Yes. So important. Absolutely. First thing I would do is they're really getting clear on that, you know, that mission of ours and not limit yourself and say, what can I really create in five, 10 years time? If I would more the feeling more than just like not the checklist, but really like how would I love to create and design my life and then look into the environment. I think, we need to fuel ourselves. You know, if we talk about confidence, it's so important that you're surrounded by people that believe in what you create. I think that it's undervalued the, the you know the power of the group, the power of communities, um, the people around us, the masterminds, accountability groups, mentors. I had a mentor when I was 17 who completely shifted my life because she showed me what was possible. Without her, maybe my journey would have been very different. And I think that, you know, those people that we have in our life, we can actually choose them and start to say that I have my dreams, but I also have the choice of choosing who's going to be in my support team. I want to talk more about that, but I know you have a third point to make. So I'm curious what the third point is. So the third point is to really understand that an idea is never ready. It's never, <laughs> we are never ready. We are never there's never a finished line of anything we do. It's always in process. And I think the concept of Kaizen is beautiful, Japanese kai, uh, method, which is basically constant improvement and learning that if you get it out and you get an interaction with the audience or with participants or community, that's when the magic happens. There's a quote that says, ideas comes from contribution or contradiction. An idea cannot live in the cave. An idea can only live when it is in process of interacting with another human being. So that's where we actually create. So we have to rethink creation as something that is actually a communal thing. It's a co- collaboration with the person that you're trying to you know, speak to or create. So to go back to the middle point about... Yes yourself in the place of positive, not necessarily positive, but like helpful collab- yes. collaborative relationships. What I really heard you saying is that you have to believe that more is available to you, that's different is available to you. And that's not, that, that whatever it is you want is not just for other people, mm. right? That's an important thing, that, that belief. Absolutely. And to create that belief, you need to be around people who believe that too. Yeah. So it's about being around. If you have an idea and you come to someone, they say, well, I don't think that's possible. You start to believe that. And when you have friends or community or, you know, uh, members of, you know, groups like we are part of that are creating things, we see, wow, this is possible. It's a four minute mile. We can see that happen for ourselves as well. And a very easy way to do that, I, I talk about that in my first TEDx, is to just, what I did for myself when I realized this was, I just took a list of five people. I wrote down people. Who are the five people who expand? When I'm around them, I expand. I become better. I don't shrink myself. I allow, allow myself to dream. And those people, they're not only just fun and supportive. Sometimes they're challenging me, but yeah. they are the ones who want the best for me. They really want me to grow and become a better version of myself and those people I called them up and I told them you're on my list and I would like to speak to you every week from now on would you be open for that and that just that small thing shifted the conversation I was having weekly yeah so you had to reach out and ask for mentorship and I love that you say these aren't yes people these aren't the people who are like yes Daria that is amazing that is amazing you're so right on but they are the people in your TEDx talk you speak about those moments where your cape 
kind of deflates and falls to the floor. Yes home after an experience. So these are the people who help you like kind of fluff up your cape again and get flying again. Absolutely. And you need that. If you have big dreams, if you have big goals, you cannot go there alone. There is no such thing as the lonely wolf, no successful entrepreneur there. Okay. We can have an entrepreneur. You can come far, but a successful, grateful, conscious, sustainable entrepreneur will not be alone ever because we are always working together we're always collaborating there is no other way and if we can shift that idea of like the self-made man or self-made woman it does not exist so it's nothing bad to get help or support the other thing is to take to your point three so once you have those like those five people that you can count on who are going to challenge you and support you and encourage you it is in those relationships where you can feel safe enough to go yeah. and have the ideas and bring them out of the cave and talk about them because they might live in the cave of your brain and they are so perfect there and they are so pristine, but it is, it is the bringing it out into the world and talking about it that, that actually yes. makes the ideas a reality. And so many of us yeah. don't surround ourselves with people who we trust to, to, to blow the ideas around with and, and expand mm. on them and then make them real. And so I love that these are such, cl- you know, from the clarity to the collaboration, to the, to the creativity, um, th- those are the three steps that will help us develop our self-trust. And if we are staying stuck alone and isolated on an island by ourselves, it's really hard to develop self-trust. Yes, absolutely. And when it comes to you were, sh- you were talking about sharing your ideas with these five people, with anyone that is around you, the more you share what you are working on, on creating in your life, whatever that is that you are, you know, your dreams, the more you tra- share your dreams, the more you can actually get other people who can support you with that. What I do sometimes around Christmas is that I sit down and I write down the list of the people who in really had an impact on me this year and I would love to keep with me close for next year and I reach out to them and say I would love to you to be holding this space for my dreams this year would you like me to hold this space for yours and I do that consciously so it's really a conscious creation of our relationships with people that you see are you know growing and they're expanding and they they want to be and whatever it can be in their personal life it doesn't have to be in professional only it can be that they want to you know take care more of their health or be a better mother or father or a partner it can be anything but you're there to hold this space for their dreams mm-hmm. like they are there to hold the space for you So can you talk a little bit more about how you help your audience and your clients develop self-trust? Because I know that it's at the foundation of more people getting their brilliant ideas out into the world. Absolutely. So we have three pillars in our, we are three-stage academy and One is mindset, one is micro, and one is macro. So the 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 mindset part has you know thirty percent of our work as in developing thought leadership is mindset, and the reason to that is that I really believe that if we don't integrate that into strategy and business development, we will not get where we want to get. So some of the things we do, we have a whole whole training and whole models on that we work very much um, in depth on this process we do work on things that will limit us in different moments in our development one of those things is rejection Mm. so we there's a whole uh, pillar that we address which is rejection and the the no in our life and then and that goes two directions the one is the boundaries of ourselves saying no and one is getting a no um uh, inviting no's into our life with the saying okay i'm actually fine with someone saying no not this time mm-hmm. so we do play with that and we explore that as a group um, a whole month when we work with that we work with group dynamics we develop you know masterminds for them they, they learn how to develop accountability groups they learn how to develop their five people themselves mm. we work on anything that has to do with the 10-year vision we have a whole chapter on 10-year vision finding that you know seeing clearer where are they what are they creating and we usually they, they tend to start here and then we we really work on expanding these ideas of what they're capable of and then of course when it comes to stage 
the whole idea of I'm not the expert. We have to address that at the very early stage that you are enough and you have to switch the direction of you know service. It's not about you. The more you are out there, the more you become an expert. So those are a couple of them. We have a whole we have 12 different mindset models we, we address at certain moments in, in their development. But one of the biggest one I would say is still rejection. It's a really big one. <laughs> yes. It's it's a tough one because somehow in our society we did not address that in in now when it comes to sales rejection or boundaries, both sides of the no, we have not addressed how to handle that. So it's almost like no is a bad word. That's right. And it's you'd have to take it personally because it means there's something yes. that's the problem. Yes. I love that person. I love that point that there's two sides to a no, that you get to put a boundary in place and that's a version of you saying no to something else. And then you have to be open to people, other people doing the same, right? Basically a no is somebody else putting a boundary in place. Yes. I think those, if I think of like the, the 12 pillars that we have the most, the ones that have had the biggest impact on our members is the 10-year vision it has really shifted their life like they, when they start to see it they visualize it and they know where they're going it becomes so clear um the six months roadmap that we do every six months together as well and then the the rejection part and actually a group dynamics as well but if we have to say the 10-year vision the the two sides of the no and the group dynamics those are the three yeah. that are the most powerful for them to become an expert. It makes sense because it's where are you going? That's your 10 years. Um, mm-hmm. how, that's strategy, right? And then there's how are you going to get there? And that's tactics. And then who's yes. the, that's people. Yes, exactly. Exactly. I love this. I love this paradigm. So how do people work with you? How can, how can people come into your world and learn more from you? So the way we work is that we take someone who is starting to think they want to teach and you know they want to develop coaching they might be coaching already but just half time or they're transitioning and then we take them up to making a living as a coach or or a trainer online educator mm-hmm. to from there when they have a financial stability which i think is very important to develop very quickly so that they feel that they can you know f- focus on this full time we go into taking them from coach to expert so we look into how can you develop your expertise how can you develop a framework how can you you know start to really find an understanding of where how am i special how am i unique unique in the one the way i'm doing things and then we take them from expert to thought leader so we really develop three stages so each stage they go through processes and of course in every level we do the mindset work we do the strategy work and we do the macro level work so it's just that it has uh, very specific needs in the way to get them to the next level basically so yeah so can you tell us a story or an example of somebody who came in to your world and really struggled with self-trust and how how they impacted the the world by gaining their own self-trust Absolutely. So one of uh, our members came in that moment and she said, I've been watching the photos of myself every year for me, and I always look how my eyes are, if I'm smiling or not. In the last three to five years, my eyes are not smiling anymore. And this is why I came. So we have a, we have a five days when we meet every three months uh, together when it was when it's possible uh, with our members and she came in for that type of you know transformational weekend and what happened was that she came in and she realized that she had a very big vision and she really had a big passion for you know impacting young women and men in you know how they can create a career for themselves either independent or in the, in the job but this everything is possible and When she started to take up, you know, to learn more about, wow, this is my vision, she started to understand that, okay, I see the vision and I have the group because we have a very strong membership community. Everyone come in with application only, so you cannot just, you know, sign up. Everyone has to go through the process of being a real team member and support team for everybody involved. So she came in and she started working with us about seven months ago when this is recorded. And since then, she has really become very clear on the mission and then understood that, okay, to get there, I have the support team, 
I need the tools. And we developed the tools of speaking development. She developed the, your, her LinkedIn presence, networking, all that. So since then, she has been on Forbes and she has uh, this, I mean, she's speaking four times a week at the moment. She's working full time and she's getting awards after awards for women in business. And she's impacting more and more people because she has this fire now she has this you know the spark is back she's excited about what she's doing she's supported she has the tools she has the team support from our members and from from ourselves and she has the vision and then because that vision just brought that fire in her back and she's no longer afraid of you know she's just driven by that she's driven by that passion and of impact and it has become an, a spiral in the last seven months she you know forbes forbes award of getting mentioned in forbes twice and you know be speaking four times a week and getting 250 likes on her linkedin posts and stuff, stuff like that that's amazing and she's working full time right. so she's basically some of our stage three members are working full time they're already mid or senior level managers most People who go through the steps are coaches, but at that level, they can come in as middle or senior level management. But it's impressive to see her journey. And I think it comes from that, you know, finding back to that smile in her face, in her, her eyes. What do you do when you have somebody who comes to you and they can't see the vision and they don't trust what they are seeing or they don't trust that they can actually have anything different than where they are right now? Yeah. Do you meet people like that? Yes, a lot. So we meet, we try, so our, our school is online, but we do have, we have an experience, a five-day experience called the next chapter experience where we do mindset and transformational work in group. We, we meet them, they, they come together for five days and we go through the whole process. And that is more the mindset work. It's very deep. It's very, uh, what happens there is that when they don't see the vision, most of the time it has to do with that they are afraid to see the vision mm -hmm. because we are as afraid of how we can succeed in our life as we can fail. So many times we talk about failure, but it's very common that we actually, we get a bit, you know, dizzy where we see everything we can create in our life because it's always expansion. Same thing with abundance. When it comes to money, we are afraid to actually, well, how would I, who would I be? Who would be, what would my identity be if I would make six or seven figures, for instance? That's right, that's right. Um, so the whole identity shift and what we do there is that we work on identity alter ego activation. So we do identity work where we uh, support them to accept the new identity Mm -hmm. and accept that that identity is going to lead them it's more not really an identity it's a shift because there, we all have different you know identities in somehow but we can use some alter egos or personal parts of ourselves going to fuel us to the next level and i would say that alter ego activation is something very powerful when you start to see a vision but your identity that you decided to have at that specific moment is stopping you from making that next step because you're saying, well, I'm not someone who speaks on, on, on Facebook live, or I'm not someone who goes on stage. I don't like that. And I will always challenge them and say, what part of you is saying that? Because I don't believe you. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, almost sometimes I have some confrontation because there's identity is trying to protect them in terms of, I want to stay here in my comfortable form. So there is a moment of, you know, breaking free. We do, um, we break boards and we, you know, we work on, and really working on the breath work and physical empowerment, physical, you know, really getting your grounding in that new identity and you become someone that believes that you're capable of that. So I would say that the 10 year vision, it's not that you don't have a 10 year vision, it's that, that you don't want to see it. You're just afraid of everything that you can create in your life. What I keep hearing from you over and over is that self-trust doesn't come from evidence. It doesn't come from somebody outside of you telling you how great you are. It doesn't, someone, it doesn't come from someone else saying, yes, that's a good idea. It really comes from your own mindset. And that is the work that you need to do to develop your self-trust. Absolutely. It's the inner work. It doesn't mean that you have to do it alone, but you need to understand that it's a process that is going to propel your life. You have to open that door and say, I want to go on that journey because it's yeah. going to open door after door. It's going to create a ripple effect of a beautiful you know, life and a world of experiences. 
but you are the one that has to decide to do that. So true. I agree. Um, so I'd love to wrap up with first, first, is there one question that you could leave listeners and viewers with that people could ask themselves just to help them get started on a journey of developing more inner trust? One question that you think kind of gets people's juices flowing in their minds. Yeah, I like to talk about the the higher self and the smaller self. Mm -hmm. And the smaller self is, you know, your your fears, your egos, your everything that is stopping you that, you know, shattering your mind, and your high, higher self is your 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 real power, your real true inner you that is capable of so much that is capable of everything you want. And I want you just to go through even a week and think, just start to reflect who is speaking. Is it my higher self or is my smaller self? It's, th- it's both are parts of you. But just think about when you say, I don't want to go live, I don't want to do this, or I don't want to do that, and this identity you know, that you have created for yourself, we all create, we all recreate our identities all the time. Do you like, I don't like coffee, I don't like chocolate. Is it really the case or is it something behind that Mm -hmm. so start to try to it's more an exercise than a question but try to work around the thought process and saying oh do i really believe that is this really what i believe or is it just something i created for myself to not you know step up my game and actually maybe fail and maybe have to get up again or you know maybe learn being uncomfortable Mm -hmm. who is speaking i love that i would say the question who is speaking and you can just ask yourself that all the time, you yes. know, when I'm complaining, who is speaking here? Yes. Best self who is speaking here. I love that. And my second question to wrap up is how can people learn more about you, be, become part of your community um, or even work with you? Yes, yeah, sure. So I will uh, share some links if it's possible below. And um, as we had this conversation about the 10 year vision, I can share my 10 year vision that I use myself mm-hmm. that you can download and use um, directly the whole worksheet and the community that we are part of. Well, where we create a community of 1000 plus uh, thought leaders, rising thought leaders. Um, I can share that link as well. TLA community on Facebook. And of course, connect with me on LinkedIn, dariav.com directly to because my name is too long to pronounce. <laughs> so dariavi.com you get directed to my LinkedIn and just write that you listen to this podcast and that you have any questions about this topic I'm happy to support and, and go further wonderful so can you pronounce your last name for me yes absolutely Daria Vodo Pianova I was so close in my brain but I didn't <laughs> want to say it out I didn't trust myself to say it out loud Daria <laughs> no worries <laughs> Thank you so much for your expertise. This was such a fun conversation. I think that it's really helpful to have somebody else in my somebody somebody else that my audience can listen to who is an expert and who is obviously helping people really go from um, you know creating an expertise and then establishing themselves as a thought leader. That's such an exciting idea. So I really appreciate your time. Thank you oh, so my much. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app and tell that friend of yours who needs some help getting where she wants to go. I'd be so appreciative if you left a review because then we can help more women create the space for their ideas too. Go to jenliddy.com forward slash free to grab the many free resources there to help you move forward. And I will see you next time. Bye.